Good morning, everybody, and happy Monday, and welcome back to the vlog. Summer mornings are just the best weather. We are getting closer to that. It's now May, 50 out right now already at 5.20 in the morning. Not bad. So it was a few weeks ago that I saw a video of Peter McKinnon's of him doing some product photography underwater where he dropped a camera into a fish tank, shot great pictures of it and actually did it a few weeks ago and it turned out really well. It was just a great idea. But what bothered me was when I looked down in the comments, there were so many people commenting saying that, yeah, this is a great idea, but Peter can only get these shots because he has great gear. And they're kind of disregarding his creativity and chalking it up to him having great gear and saying that he's only good because he can spend thousands on thousands of dollars on his gear. And the entry level photographer, the entry level gear guy cannot get these kind of results. And so lucky for this video, I am that entry level gear guy. So we will be recreating this Peter McKinnon video using entry level gear, using the Sony a6100, an entry level mirrorless camera with a crop sensor, it's not even a full frame sensor, as well as the Sony a6100, which is an even older version of this entry level mirrorless camera, as well as a very old cracked beat up Google Pixel 2, for those of you who are still not convinced with the Sony a6000 and a6100, we're gonna be using this guy as well. So let's get into it. I did have to buy this fish tank for $26 on Amazon, which miraculously survived shipping. I have no idea how. As well as this black poster board from Walmart for a couple dollars. I started off by cleaning out the fish tank from every single speck of dust and floaty particle that I could possibly get out of it. I don't want to have to do a lot of extra work after I shoot these photos. So the more that you can clean out of this fish tank, the better. I don't have one of those detachable faucet heads on my sink. So I had to do it the slow way. I then began my journey of 57 water cups, moved my fish tank to a prime lighting position, installed my $2 poster board, and even found a use for the box that it came with. And then I realized that there were bubbles on the side of the aquarium. So then I wiped off all the bubbles with my finger, which was very tedious. And then I went outside to try to recruit Sarah. Hey babe. Would you mind helping me out? This will be the camera that we use. For my setup, I have my Sony a6100 here with a nifty 50 on it, 50 millimeter f1.8 lens because I want to let as much light as possible into this shot. I have one light. It is a video light, it's not a strobe. Um, I also have these lights up here. Most of it, I mean really just whatever lights you have, if it's lamps, whatever you have, use as much light as you possibly can. So I'm gonna recruit this lamp here. Two, one, go. Yeah, that might have been it. Our backdrop, no. Now comes the real test. Can we get a good shot with a Google Pixel 2?
We're calling it. That was good. That was good. Now it is time to look at some footage. So I guess what I wanted to show for this video is not that gear doesn't matter because gear does matter, but that creativity also matters too. And I think of creativity and gear in terms of gear being the hand that you're dealt and creativity being the way that you play it. And so that both of them are still important, but creativity will usually prevail. So you can still get great shots using an entry-level setup, such as the A6000 plus this Nifty 50 lens. You can still get great shots using an old Sony A6100 with only the kit lens. And you can still get a good shot even using a old beat up Google Pixel 2. So that's it for today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it, if this was useful to you, go ahead and leave a like consider subscribing and I will hopefully see you next time.